the human torch was denied a bank loan. <laughs> All right. Okay. Chapo, Monday, August 22nd. Title of this episode, Where's Felix? Where's Felix? Where's Felix? Where in the world is Felix Biederman? Uh, it's a Mad Night Duo episode today. Yeah, the, uh, rare, the rare bipolarity chat. Um, we'll, we'll let you know what happens with Felix at a, a future date. Is um, this the end of Felix? I, I hope not. I hope not. But it is Monday, August 22nd, and the show must go on. Indeed. I guess the so, show must go, Brandon. <laughs> uh, I said that the first thing I wanted to talk about on today's show was just like, just a, just a brief little check-in with our boy with the homemade gun who killed former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. I bring this up because I saw a, a little news item that states that something like 59% of the Japanese public does not want an official state funeral for Shinzo Abe. Yep. And the uh, popularity of the liberal of his Liberal Democratic Party's cabinet, which is in power right now, is abysmal. Everyone's mad at them. So, I mean, I guess the way like to think about this is, is this the most successful assassination in history? I mean, when you think about like what is the what the goals are that people ostensibly have, you know, I mean, if we're talking about ones carried out by you know conspiracies and networks of people connected to power structures, you know, they, they their assassinations tend to be very successful, but it's very rare that the uh, that the lone nut gets what he wants, unless it's just to be famous. Yeah, you know, like I'm talking, like yeah, you're right. There are professional assassinations, you know, Patrice Lumumba, uh, you know, Chick John Mara, F. Kennedy, uh, JFK, things like that. Um, but this is like you know, uh, a true amateur. Yeah, a true amateur, just just a man with a mission. Um, who was just you know sick of his mom getting ripped off by the Moonies. Yeah, and, and he decided I'm going to uh, go down to the, the last remaining Radio Shack on Earth and just buy enough products until I build something that can kill the former prime minister with. Well. And it seems like he got his wish because, like, I mean, it's like, you know, his party is just like, oh, well, yeah, we'll stop doing stuff with the Moonies. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. We will not so, hang we're out sorry. With the we, we're sorry. We won't do uh, that anymore. I mean, it is very funny, but it's also definitely true. I mean, I'm not a Japan hand, but I'm going to take a wild guess and say that some significant portion of the outrage of this revealed link between the LDP and the Moonies is that they are a Korean church. <laughs> yeah. And the thought of them, of, of the LDP just. Over there, just rubbing elbows with a bunch of Koreans. It probably doesn't sit right with a lot of uh, Japanese people. And their and their gaijin religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh, yeah Christianity. Uh, Christianity. No, thank you. Uh, m- many leading Moonies also have a B positive B blood type. <laughs> yep. No good. Get it out of here. <laughs> Get it out of here. But uh, no, no, no. Like I'm just I'm interested in this because, as far as like you know, scrappy lunch pail can do attitude assassins. I think this one was successful because. There's something so like distinctly like kind of apolitical about his goal. Yeah, you know, like it wasn't any, it wasn't any kind of like, um, like grand political strategy. It was just sort of like, uh, this guy ripped off my mom. Yeah, like and she's, I'm very, she's I'm very broke dis- now, and I'm mad at you. I'm very disappointed in him. Mm-hmm. I find him very unsatisfactory. Yeah. Also, I, uh, you know, one time I almost made it onto BattleBots, and I've been. <laughs> I'm pissed about that ever <laughs> since, and now I'm going to show you guys just how good I could be at creating <laughs> amateur weapons of death. Yeah. Well, that fucking thing had an electric trigger. An electric what trigger. The shit, man. Damn, very impressive. But that's just it. I think that he wanted it more, and I think it's nice, kind of, that he got. He kind of was rewarded for that. Yeah, and you know, like I said, it's just uh, this is an interesting thing. I mean, I just like I think it's like you know, usually when a political figure dies, there's like or is is murdered, there's like an outpouring of support. And like you know, like you like you know, when when presidents die of old age, everyone yeah. pretends they were like a great leader and a mm-hmm. wonderful president. Yep. Like when Ronald Reagan or George H. W. Bush died, but I don't know. It's like the Japanese people; they just all decided they were like decided on mass at the <sighs> same time. They were just like, you know what? Fuck this guy. He sucks. Yeah, he sucks. Uh, let's <laughs> throw him into a fucking ditch. <laughs> <laughs> They're just gonna not even a fuck fuck state funeral. No funeral. Just dumping him into a sewer. <laughs> New, just a nude body floating into the ocean. <laughs> just gonna just just airdrop him into the Fukushima exclusion zone and just have him his carcass ripped apart by feral dogs. Yep, yep. Well, that's what you get. That's what you get for like, trucking with the Moonies. It's true, ripping off old ladies. Yep. They're fucked up CIA backed fascist church. Yeah, I mean that is it, there is something amazing about that life trajectory. So Shinzo Abe, the 
the child of one of the chief uh, perpetrators of the the Japanese the genocidal colonial project in China uh, becomes like an inner circle figure within this massively powerful uh, like the, the LDP is the st- is the political state and the deep state at the same time basically uh, and spending you know years in, in office uh, pulling the strings and then you leave office because uh, you've got uh, uh, IBS basically and yeah. then just is that true dude, is that why he left office he had chronic he had, like he had doo-doo or something. Yeah, yeah, he okay, had yeah, yeah. and uh, he'd had he'd had to like step down previously to like take a break after take a shit that, to take a shit <laughs> And then in retirement, somebody just blows you apart with like a package of uh, fireworks. And then, and then your entire legacy is destroyed. Yeah. It's, you know, like people say, you know, Japan is like sort of like, I don't know, like a, a country in decline or like, you know, there, no, one, no one's having sex. No one wants to leave the house. Everyone wants to play video games. But, yeah. you know, there's still some can do spirit. There's still a can do attitude. There's a there. bit of grit out there. Yeah. There are still some people who have grit, Sigma Grind set uh, in glorious Nippon. and it'll be interesting to see uh them in the future well i just wanted to check in on uh japan briefly because i was i was fascinated by just how universally japan has just decided to just on a dime just piss on the grave of their former <laughs> prime minister because i mean you know i don't know like they just i, I think they identify with the guy that killed them they kind of do and i, I think it's they think they identify with them because it's like cause, cause, because it was so apolitical he was just like i'm dissatisfied with you well that's just it is that everyone is is being is being ripped off. Everyone feels that they're ripped off, but it's all through an individual lens and that can only ever accidentally have a meaningful political element. And like, this is a perfect example. Like his, his general sense of, of, of dissatisfaction is concentrated on the specific fact of his mother's uh, exploitative relationship with the, the church of unification. And then from there, he then builds on to resentment of uh, Abe and the LDP. It's not from any of their policies specifically or anything having to do with the, you know, the, the grander structures that they per- perpetrate, even though those are the real, real sources of, of alienation and resentment. Uh, yeah. And that's, that's the great challenge of this moment is that there is so much alienation being felt, but it's being channeled pretty much everywhere, but towards, but the political. I don't know. It'd be like if someone like someone took a shot at Joe Biden because they like didn't like the way he rode a bike or something. I mean, he does Apparently ride his bike like him. a bitch. Um, all right. Well, let's 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 move to uh, the domestic political scene. And new power rankings released by the Washington Post: the top ten Republican presidential. Candidates. Oh, thank God! We I'm glad and we're like, doing you know, this. These are these are new power rankings. But let's go through according to the Washington Post. Was their top ten contenders? And you know. When we get to the end of it, I do want to talk about the interesting Trump DeSantis. You know, like the, the battle lines being drawn. It would be interesting to see what's going to happen with that. Yeah. Uh, but let, let's, go, let's go through the power rankings first. Coming in at number 10, Donald Trump Jr. Oh, man. According to the Washington Post, they say, as we've said before, this applies only to a scenario in which his father doesn't run. God, think how that funny that would be if they both ran against each other. Think how bad Donald Trump would own his own son. Oh, it's just he would not stop for a second. Folks, he's never any good. He's like, he threw, he threw, throws a ball like a girl. He tried to wear a jersey to a Yankee game. Okay, he wasn't going to wear a suit. I had to smack him some sense into him. It says, uh, but that's a scenario in which some polls show him running as high as second, with the caveat that we don't have a lot of good polling. You clearly have a base to work with, but capitalizing on that is another matter. And it's not just about lobbing bombs from the sideline, which is true, which is his true talent. Previous ranking seven. So Don Trump Jr. has fallen. Oh no. Three spots. Oh no. Uh, Matt, what do you think about like in, in a scenario in which Donald Trump doesn't run for president, Don Jr. running in his place? I mean, it's very hard to imagine a scenario where Donald Trump doesn't run, but maybe he dies, something like that. And he's and there's the son to carry on the the mantle. I think he would lose to DeSantis. Because I think that that would shatter the whole uh, collective and give people sort of permission to seek a new leader. Because at the end of the day, as much as our friend Don Jr. loves to try to sound like his dad. If you know, have you noticed that recently? He's really trying to sound like, like his speech. It's uncanny. If you look at any of those insane videos where he's just gacked out of his mind and his eyes are like red little slits and he's clearly been up for three days. And he's just enunciating the words. He's doing a bad Donald Trump impression. It's not even a good one. 
He doesn't even sound good. He's not as good as James Austin Johnson, that's for sure. I mean, I, you know, I, I do tons of bad Trump impressions. I mean, my Trump impression is I just, I always revert to Jiminy Glick. Yeah. I go, you know, what are you going to do, do, do a movie? What are you going to do something that really clicks with the public? And, 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 and Dan Jr., Dan Jr. Yeah. Hey, what, do you what do you do? I'm Dr. Goodwill. And I go very high. Yeah, I think that, uh, I think it would sort of be like how uh, after, you know, the death of Muhammad, Mm-hmm. And he had the yes. Sunni Shia split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were the rider dies for Ali, you know, uh, his son-in-law, but the, the, the majority ended up going with with the uh, Umayyads, and I think that would be how it would go here. What about the occluded son, Eric? How come no one's speculating? <laughs> how come? How come no one's speculating on Eric jumping in the race? I mean, it's because he is not. He has not been. Uh, drawn to like doing the political stuff yeah no he's running he's running the business he's running he's making trump magazine right like this is how you know that don jr is the biggest loser of the kids yeah because he is the one who most uh uh emphatically started doing the political stuff and like started doing all the red meat shit and going to cpac and and hanging out with charlie kirk yeah that's a fucking loser who has nothing else going on presumably eric trump as much as he might be a goon uh, is pro- occupied He's got golf courses to run with actual stuff, <laughs> which means that Don Jr. of the son, of the kids was clearly never given a real job in the organization. Like they gave him an office and, and a salary, but and a, and a secretary and everything. But the, like the phone wasn't uh, plugged in, <laughs> and uh, and now that's why he's fled to politics, uh, refuge of the loser. But yeah, it's not going to be enough. All right, coming in at number nine is Mike Pompeo. The Washington Post writes, the former Secretary of State returns to this list, showing all the signs of the guy of a guy who will run. Those include running digital ads in Iowa and South Carolina. Also worth watching, he recently became one of the highest, pro- Trump, highest, highest profile Trump officials to testify to the House Committee investigating January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol. And afterward, he seemed to temper his denial about having discussed removing Trump from office using the 25th Amendment, saying merely that it hadn't been discussed seriously. It'll sure be interesting. We were kidding. <laughs> It'll sure be interesting to see how Trump backers respond to whatever testimony Pompeo provided. Previous- removing, removing Trump with the 25th Amendment was a suggestion someone shouted out during a game of whose line is it anywhere style we, uh, anyway style re- improv we were playing. <laughs> Previous ranking not applicable. So I mean, is he making his he's making his debut on the list at nine? I, I do not under. I hate this list infuriates because it's like is your. Tr- this is garbage, but at the same time, you know why people like it and why they'd rather talk about it than policy because it's sports, and sports yeah. is fun to talk about. How are you going to put Papio on the list? You, Papio, no rings. What, what, what's Papio got? He was Secretary of State for what? Two years, two or three years? He wasn't even the whole time. No, Matt, Matt the thing about Pompeo is, you know, he's, got, he's not a 5 tool player. He's got two tools at most, but he's cutting. He's cutting weight. He's down. He's got the lap band surgery. He's lost about 100 pounds. I think he's hungry. We're going to see him at the combine and a lot of, a lot of GMs. I mean, he's definitely hungry. A lot of hungry. GMs that could be, be looking to trade up. Got Mike Pompeo. I mean, he's definitely hungry. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's always hungry. He's hungry, always hungry. Well, now. Now, now his stomach's now the is, size of a fucking Yeah, uh, now that his stomach's been quarters, reduced to the say. size of a fucking walnut. Yeah. yeah. I, do, I never understand the Pompeo thing. I get why he wants to be president because he's a dumb hick, but I don't understand why anyone takes it seriously. What what is his value add, especially with even without Trump in there? Who, okay, well, wait, who does he represent? Matt, what, the 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 big uh, foreign policy heads among the American base Republican Matt, voter? Matt, dog, dog, you've forgotten. He's gonna make a make a make a strong pitch to the foreign policy. We all remember the Abraham Accords. <laughs> a lot of people say that was the Mike Pompeo Accords. Oh God, the, the Abraham Accords would never have happened without Mike Pompeo. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's the pitch. I guess is that he is the he's the nerds pick. But those guys are never going to be able to move the dial. We know that. Mike Pompeo just he's too much of a pig. He's just too much of a swine. He's got nothing. He has no he has nothing. He has no charisma. He has no uh uh media angle. He's got no he doesn't have any sound bites. He doesn't have any memorable wars with the with the with the deep state or with uh woke Hollywood. He, he's not he's done nothing. He's not battle tested. What? Oh yeah, he, he made the whole Abraham Accords and he, uh, you know, tried to make sure that the, as many uh, Venezuelans and Syrians as, and Afghans as possible died. But like, he didn't do anything that that is going to ignite the imaginations of MAGA world or the the or the GOP voting population. What's 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 the point? It's baffling to me. Secretaries I mean, of state who want to be president. Yeah, like, you don't get this country. <laughs> Look at Hillary Clinton. We don't give a fuck uh, about that boring <laughs> bullshit. 
and another thing though, I mean, it, it, as much of a porker as he was before, people who get the lap band surgery, they just end it up looking bad. weird. You they look, look weird. weird. It just you, it doesn't work. You look weird. Like that was a big problem for uh for Huckabee and Chris Christie. After he too. lost all that weight, he just looked deflated. <laughs> Okay. Remember Jonah Hill when Jonah Hill got all yeah. skinny? People didn't like it. Nightmare. Yeah, you had to go back to being, uh, you know, yeah. sort of rotund. Yeah. Okay, coming in at number eight, Rick Scott, the Skeletor, the senator from Florida, is often dismissed because of his senator awkward. Senator from Insta. <laughs> the senator from Florida is often dismissed because of his awkward personal style and his reptilian it- head and face. <laughs> The fact that he looks like a goddamn goblin. I love the Washington Post. It's like awkward personal style. Yeah, that's one way. That's one way to describe how how freakish he looks. But also like his his open swindles, his open swindling. Oh right, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. The thing where he's the largest ever defrauder of Medicare. Right, that thing. Oh but yeah. Don't you forget though? He has an agenda. He, has, he's he, does, serious, he does have policy. He does have a serious policy. policy agenda. He's all about policy, and we are all in America. What we love most is policy. We love plans, don't we, folks? Well, the funny thing about like the the, the Rick Scott agenda like the scott's policy points is that when he released that like mitch mcconnell the real power in the power was just like dude like don't don't say this shit out loud we have we're trying to face an election in the midterms here you can't just come out and say we're gonna get rid of social security and medicare we're We're, going going to do that but you don't tell people about that you don't put it in writing so that people can put it in an ad and say a vote for rick scott is a vote to put your grandmother into the fucking glue factory we are going to Raise taxes on middle class and working class people so that they get skin in the game. That's skin in the game. Yeah, I mean, I think no. He just wants he wants he wants he wants uh, he wants skin from middle class and working class people to cover more of his skull. Yes, he, folks, he's running out of skin. I got so much, I don't have enough skin. It's As you're seeing, tight. it's too tight on the my skull, skull. The skull is clearly breaking through at several points here. <laughs> From the fucking said, case sausage that I have, uh, when, when I, like as 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 the extra skin is just like hangs off Mike Pompeo like drapes, <laughs> they just shave off. Yeah. Give it give it to Rick Scott so he can look slightly more human, slightly less monstrous and otherworldly. Ah, uh, yeah, the post m- mentions, but he's been positioning himself for the national stage by launching his own platform, which Senate Leader Mitch McConnell has distanced himself from. And if Republicans can win back the Senate, perhaps Scott gets some credit as head of the Senate GOP's campaign arm. Well, see, that, yeah, that's already looking <laughs> yeah, bad. Yeah, like, so this is just going to make it even more ridiculous if they get their asses kicked in November, which it looks like they very well might. And it says that. Well, the Washington Post says. That position is a double-edged sword, though, given it's... Uh, uh, sorry. That position is a double-edged sword, though, given it's quite possible Republicans blow a good opportunity. Previous ranking, not applicable. So Rick Scott coming in at eight. Uh, I just another one where I don't get it. Who is this for? Who is this for other than literal Medicare fraudsters? Like, people in their respective states who do the thing he did where they would defraud Medicare with fake, uh, fake bills. That... Probably he would probably pull somewhere in the ninety percent among those people, but it's a very small base to build from. Coming in at number seven is Nikki Haley. Why? What is with this? <laughs> this They've is- been talking about this since she got fucking uh, uh, since she got confirmed by the Senate to have the stupid job of UN sec- of UN uh, uh, ambassador. Or whatever the fuck so it's called. It says UN, former UN ambassador yes, and South UN Carolina ambassador. governor is a real contender on paper. What, 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 what paper? <laughs> Literally the paper that you asked over Washington and Post. over again. It's bullshit. And it says she is leaning hard into the idea that she'll run, having repeatedly cited the idea of electing a woman as president. You'll notice she's the only woman on this list, but races aren't won on paper. Haley often disappears from the national discourse. I mean, since it's an election, yeah, they are. <laughs> Elections <laughs> literally are won on paper. Where else are you going to vote well on the on the, the computer machines that's true but the venezuelan packets we mostly vote we still mostly vote on paper in this country it says haley often disappears from the national discourse and it's still not clear what her campaign would be about i think they just mentioned it the idea of electing a woman see here's the thing shouldn't you guys have made these had these conversations in your stupid fucking newsroom sometime in the last six years and decided not to humor this bullshit instead of just bring it up just to have something to talk about and like nikki haley is sort of She's more of like the neocon mole. She's like, you know. Well, that's why they want to take her seriously yeah. because there are so many Republicans who revile the Trump thing, but generally, but are still and, stuck and, and, and Nikki, want to shape the party in their uh, in their agenda. 
You know, like uh, and 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 and, and Nikki has sort of um, been 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 a little bit of, given given Trump and his supporters a little bit of the high hat. She definitely has given. Them and you the know high what? Hat. Like I say, like if you're going to have a woman on this list, I think Tulsi Gabbard is a stronger contender than Nikki <laughs> Haley at this point. A billion times hotter than Nikki Haley. True. And Trump friendly. Yeah, it's true. It's wild. What the Nikki Haley thing is uh, is always insane to me. I don't get it. Coming in, uh, previous ranking four. So Nikki Haley has fallen. She's three, she's three uh, she's yeah. a billion. She's negative five. She's the square root of six. It doesn't matter. She's not none of these. Most of these people, honestly, this is this is a non-existent list. It's there's two names on it. All right, well, we're getting we're getting to those two names. And number six, Ted Cruz. Hey. The senator from Texas has been out front in criticizing the FBI's search of Trump, including an early push for the search warrant. He has also floated impeaching Attorney General Merrick Garland and said the FBI agent said that FBI agents had been turned into stormtroopers. Previous ranking six. So Ted Cruz holding at six. But I mean, like his like, you know, his obsequiousness to Trump. I mean, like, wait. So the best thing he has to offer is just kissing Trump's ass. Right. In a, in a race where if Trump runs, then he's yeah, irrelevant. Exactly. And then, I like, love there, Trump. And there are, He's there, my favorite. And there I are love better, him so much. There are better stand-ins, you know? Yeah. But, like, how is he supposed to criticize him or distance himself? Yeah, exactly. It's absurd. It's a, it's, it's a totally... If he's doing this at all, it's, it's based on the assumption that Trump won't run. And even then, there are other people with a better claim to his legacy than him. The guy who ran against him in 2016 and famously did not endorse him at the RNC. Oh, he didn't, but then, like, but then he spent the last, like, three or four years just, abs- just being an Ugh. absolute kiss-ass, just a complete suck-up. Un- un- absolutely uh, repulsive, just a person that I don't think anybody respects on Earth, even people who vote for him. Okay, coming in at five is Glenn Youngkin. Glenn Blumkin. <laughs> Again, Glenn Blumkin. <laughs> okay, this is more East Coast, D.C., Libby- media Bellway bias. Beltway bias. Beltway bias. bias, and just... How many times have motherfuckers talked about Mark fucking Warner running for president? <laughs> uh, Washington Post writes, it still seems like a bit of a stretch for someone to launch a presidential campaign just a year into his one term okay, as governor. Okay, then why are you putting him on this <laughs> stupid list? Uh, Virginia doesn't allow governors to seek re-election. Didn't know that. It's true. One, one term governors. Yeah, one, one term governors. But he's clearly putting himself into the mix and 2022 could play into his hands. Imagine a world in which flawed candidates cost the GOP winnable races and possibly the Senate in states such as Arizona, Georgia, Ohio, or Pennsylvania. At that point, the guy whose 2021 win was supposed to be a roadmap for the party, a roadmap disregarded in these Senate primaries, might look pretty attractive. Previous ranking eight. So Glenn Blumkin... Just jumping, jumping three more. I mean, it's DC media bias, and then it's also just wish wishful thinking because they. Yeah, want this is the guy they want to be like. They want, it, yeah. They want the GOP to come to its senses. Yeah. They want to have to have a big. A rever- they want to have them to have that. Uh, what Biden said they would have that awakening, because as Nancy Pelosi has said, we need a strong GOP, yeah. and what they mean is one that uh, plays by the rules, uh, and they really want one of those back, and they know that Glenn Blumkin would never threaten any of their precious rules, uh, but. I'm sorry, folks. Everyone is just getting crazier every moment of the yeah. day. There is, it's a pure, one way, uh, crazification uh, trajectory, which means there is no coming to senses. Everyone's senses are degrading <laughs> in real time. I got news for you. George W. Bush and Dick Cheney are not walking through that nope. door. Nope. They're not walking through that door. And if they did, they'd get booed <laughs> and then throw a fucking tomato is thrown at them. Uh, God, co- did you see uh, that fucking... Dr- Emperor Palpatine video that uh, Dick, Dick Cheney, Cheney put did, out to yeah. try to rescue his daughter before she got blown out, annihilated in Wyoming. Yeah, he was like, Trump is not, he's not a man of honor. He lost. He lost badly. That's just, that's not playing. That's not on. That's not good crack in the GOP. Coming in at number four, Tim Scott. The senator from South Carolina has faced some criticism from the right for his endorsement of moderate Lisa Murkowski. But if anyone can get past that kind of thing, it might be the broadly liked South Carolina senator. He's also raising massive sums, $9.6 million last quarter, for what should be an easy reelection bid. And he can use that money to run for president. Uh, so, yeah, he can use $9 million to run for president. Well, yeah, you know, good luck good. with that. All right, good luck. When like 1% of Americans <laughs> have ever heard yeah. of you. Scott's recently published book included a blurb that said he was preparing a presidential run. A blurb? Dude, 
I worked in the publishing industry. Blurbs don't mean shit. They don't even read those books. No. Nope, so who never. gave them the blurb? Who gave them the blurb? What's the, what's the blurb? What's the blurb? Was the blurb from Tim Scott on his own book saying, "Hey, everybody, I'm, I'm running, running for president." president. Or, or is it a blurb from someone going like, "This reads like somebody who's running for president." Or shit. Um, but the publisher later said it was an error and that Scott hadn't approved the line. Uh, okay, this is. It, it, well, by it, the way. That used to be the standard campaign books. Yeah. I'm sorry, folks. TikToks or nothing. <laughs> yeah. Not on TikTok. You're not really running for president. Uh, I will say Tim Scott, I would absolutely not bet on him to be the presidential candidate or the GOP, but I would, if I were a betting man, which I am, and if I were technically savvy, which I am not, I would find some way to lay money right now on him being the vice presidential nominee See, in 2024. That makes sense. Like he is the he fits every fucking. He checks every box because he makes he's sense like for everybody because nobody really knows him, and I guess he's like broadly likable. But it's just like he's just sort of like a inoffensive black guy who like doesn't piss off MAGA people and yep. seems reasonable enough. Yep. for the the, the, the DC neocon Beltway perf- and perfectly is the perfect rejoinder to the Democratic push that is going to be all based on racial hysteria because that's all they'll have left. They'll be like these guys are the Nazis returned, and if they put a black guy on the ticket. That is a genuine uh, conundrum for them because for those less politically sensitive folks who haven't built, you know, castles of, in the sand over all this stuff and have like really strong opinions on it, they're like, there's, look, there's a black guy right there. He's, he's going to be vice president. What are you talking about? So I, I think for, for Trump or DeSantis or some third ma- magical pony common, uh, possibility, to Scott makes sense. He's not going to be a threat to you. He, he, he helps you shore up uh, one of the big campaign uh, arguments against you, it's it's absolutely if it's somebody else, then somebody fucked up because it's the only one that makes sense. Previous ranking five, so Tim Scott uh, jumping a spot here. Zero really? chance he gets nominated though because but you, you nobody like, knows who he is. Yeah, you know. and this is we know when you're going against Donald Trump, that's not going to happen. That's not going to cut it. You're not going to go. You're not going to go through earned what you're going to use earned media and and fucking campaign money to make up for that kind of deficit. No way. All right, here's where it gets interesting. The top three. Coming in at number three, and, and this one is, is truly idiotic to me, Mike Pence. Give me eight. <laughs> Mike fucking Pence. Well, I think what's interesting about this is that, okay, dog, the thing about Mike Pence is that if he runs for president against Trump or anyone else, the thing is he's got to want it. He wants it. He's got the hunger more than anyone. Because if he loses, he's going to be executed for treason. <laughs> he's running like his life is on the line. <laughs> And I think you're going to see a lot of he's going to see a lot of big stats coming from. He's going to put up big numbers because I got to. I simply must repeat again: if he loses the election, he's going to be hanged as a traitor. It's true. He cannot allow Donald, President Trump and the Patriots to get back in charge. <laughs> the Patriots are in control. Mike Pence. He's taking a taking a, a long drop and a short stop. They're good. They're going to be compromising his ass to a permanent end. It says here. Pence offered some interesting comments this week, opening the door to testifying to the January 6th committee and saying, the American people have a right to know what happened. Okay, well, he's already dead. If that, he's already yeah, done. Well, exactly. He's Who collaborating. Is this to? He's collaborating. Who are you appealing to? What the Republican voter he, is going to uh, like uh, hearing that? He has walked a fine line on criticizing Trump for that day. <laughs> That's hilarious. Despite the insurrectionist, insurrectionists endangering his life. We shouldn't expect him to thoroughly denounce the man who picked him as vice president, but he's certainly got a vested interest in the party moving in a different direction. Yes, that's that's, that's one way of putting it. You do, but why would the voters? They like it. They're they're all in on it. This is all premised on a fantasy. It is over. That era is dead. That that politics will is is extinguished. If you are not embodying every momentary hemorrhoidal flare up of the of the Republican consciousness. You are not going to make any headway because they don't give a shit about any of that stuff. And you're fucking Mike Pence. You're the guy who stood in the way of Trump challenging the phony election. And they all think the election was rigged. The last line of this is really great. It says, the hard part is facilitating that without completely alienating the Trump backers he'd need in 2024. He already has alienated them. The alienation is happening. Where are you taking it? He has an option to not alienate them. He terminally and critically and forever alienated them. Mad madness. Democrats would have to pass a bill in key states, uh, making it to illegal to vote uh, if you're white, if you don't have a New York Times subscription. <laughs> if only New York Times subscribing Americans, hell, anybody who subscribes to a newspaper, maybe, uh, were allowed to vote, then yes, he would win. But that's not I, going to happen. I'm like, okay, Pence's previous ranking was three. So he's holding steady at three. I don't understand how he can be in the top five. How he when, can be as anywhere. They said, 
the hard part is facilitating that without completely alienating the Trump backers. He did like, how is he above? They have any, been like, alienated. Yes, it's it's done. It's done. They Once were again, they, one direction moving in one direction. They start. They had the election. The premise was established. This is fake. We need to overturn these results. That's the right thing to do. Mike Pence refused to do it. He is the traitor. He is the fucking Judas Iscariot of the whole fucking mag movement, which, by the way, everyone could kind of see coming. I remember going to the RNC in, in Cleveland right after they announced Pence as the VP, sweating my balls off in this park with a bunch of InfoWars people. And I overheard them talking about Pence. And they're like, I mean, he seems like he's sort of deep state. He seems like he's establishment, but, you know, he also helps with the evangelicals. Yeah. They were doing the same sort of compromise that all the sappy liberals do whenever some fucking gargoyle is brought in for the democratic party like say i don't know joe biden as vp in two, in 2008 hey i thought you were against the iraq war well what's this fucking foreign policy gargoyle who helped start it doing on your ticket oh it's for it's because we got to establish our foreign policy bona fides or or fucking tim kane yeah and so <laughs> yeah, yeah. trail it's like he wasn't he was never part of the family he was never a real one he was always a sop to the, to, the, to the establishment. And when the time came, what did he do? He betrayed them. All right. The top two. Yes. Now, there, there's the, 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 this, this is only just says see above. And like this is just basically at number two, Donald Trump. And number one, Ron DeSantis. Whoa. Trump's previous ranking number one. DeSantis' previous ranking whoa, number two. Whoa, whoa. So the now top two spots. Newsier. Now, this, this is news here. The this top. is the illusion of news here. <laughs> <laughs> this is something to talk about, people. <laughs> this is content, baby. <laughs> So, Ron DeSantis leapfrogging Donald Trump into the number one spot, according to the Washington Post, for the strongest Republican contender for 2024. All right. So, like, like here, here is something that's actually, like, of note. Mm -hmm. there's, there's actually a real possibility is that, like, for instance, I think today Alex Jones just endorsed Ron DeSantis. Yeah. And it seems like some, like, you know, people are all assuming Trump is going to run. I mean, I know we are. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's essentially leaked it the press several times that he's already made the decision and he's just picking a day. I guess the interesting thing with this is like, I, I, like I, th I thought with DeSantis, it's just it's a matter of like the Republican Party is just like, they need an option B right. in case Trump is, you know, indicted or, you know, <laughs> or I mean, it's dies impossible or something. to imagine actually happening, but it, I guess you have to plan for all contingencies. Right. But I think like th that planning is taking on a life of its own. I think the Santis really feels that like this is his moment. Yes. And you know, I and like if and he I does, it's because he's not that bright. And I think a lot of the um, Republican media is would just would would kill they to do anything other than have that. to defend Donald Trump yes. over and talk about him yes. over and over Even and over again. Because you know he's yeah. not one of them either. Yeah. No. 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 Absolutely. Uh, I honestly kind of think that the Santis is still a less good choice for the Republicans than Trump because they think what they think is there's all this baggage about the election theft and all that shit and, and his just residual scandals and the whole, like the threat of a loss of democracy and all that. But again, that's stuff that's mostly being assimilated and processed by people who are still invested in these institutions and structures, which is not going to be your average Rep Republican primary voter. They don't really care about any of that stuff. So Trump is able to, appeal to a non-politicized audience of people who are largely alienated from our institutions who don't really care about that stuff. He comes across still, after, even after being president and all the culture wars, he comes across as more economically and in some cases socially moderate than the Republican Party in general. Yeah. And that is appealing to a lot of people. And DeSantis, if he gets in there, he is just the Republican Party. Yeah. He is the Republican Party and its entire cultural war obsessions and its economic agenda. And he cannot have the same or, uh, heterodox appeal to a general election audience that Trump does. And, you know, like, like yeah, like he is, like, as governor, like, he's clearly running for president. Mm -hmm. And by doing, like, the, 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 like the right-wing internet story of the week and, like, legislating to that agenda. Yeah. Like, I'm going to put um, PTSD veterans as, as make them teachers. No, he's a genius. You know, like, uh, well, we're we're going to we're put trans kids in jail. Because, you know, we're going to make yeah. it illegal to teach, like, the history of slavery in schools. Yeah. Like, this is where you got to look at him and you're like, this guy's either a genius or he's a fucking idiot. Either way, he is riding a wave that I don't think he fully understands. But, like... So once Trump, once Trump establishes the new terrain of the Republican Party uh, and its relationship to media and, and, and uh, its, its relationship to its base as like, oh, this isn't about policy anymore. We've all, we don't care about that anymore. This is about raw uh, emotional response.
response. That's what we want out of our politics. And Trump provided them with this catharsis that they've never had before, and they don't want to give, give up. And so if he wants it again, that's why without DeSantis there, it looks like there's nobody who could even sniff him. But what DeSantis does understand at some uh, primordial level is that, okay, if the way that you can get traction is through like being involved with people's be, being emotionally involved with like the traumas, the, the culture wars, you have to make news and Trump could make news by being Trump. You're just some asshole in Florida, but you are the governor of a state. So if you can make news mm-hmm. that is just, Hey, what are you not, what are you mad about? CRT? We're banning him. What, 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 what's, what's this stuff? Uh, 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 grooming? No more. Uh, Disney, you hate that. We're, we're getting rid of them. And just, Every time there's a news cycle, it doesn't matter here he is to associate himself and it's like, with like it. the Disney thing. It doesn't matter if these policies or things go anywhere. That's they they like, drop that matter. immediately. Who cares? Like it's just, He got the headlines for the week. Headline. Like, we're standing DeSantis. up to the Disney groomers. The thing you're mad about, DeSantis yeah. is dealing with. Yeah, exactly. And that is like he is becoming a celebrity through action. And you know what's another thing that's But he's still way, way, way behind Trump, though. Well, I mean, I okay, like, so you, you disagree with the Washington Post. Like Trump should obviously be in the number one I spot. And because, you know, I mean, I think like they think that like, he's going to be dinged by this, like, you know, the many investigations into yeah. him and like, you know, but I, I sort of feel like the way you do is like, I think like the entire American system, like our legal and political system is in a fucking suicide pact with the presidency. And yeah. like, you cannot, for, no matter what he did, you cannot indict a sitting or former president for the no. crimes they committed in office. Can't no matter, do it. No matter how blatant. It's a red or, line. It's, yeah, Because exactly. the job is doing crimes. Yeah. You're asking these people to publicly commit mass murder for four years and then step down and live the rest of their life. You, you can't ask people to do that with that uh, risk out there. Uh, so that, that, is a, that is a precedent that can't be de- defeated. I, mean, but like, I think they're hoping, and while obviously everyone is hoping that Trump isn't the nominee, which, by the way, is a thing that's going to help get him the nomination. Yeah. Uh, th- these guys are hoping he won't be the nominee. I don't think some of them might delusionally think he's going to get indicted. But I think that even the realists among them assume that there will be, as I said, this miasma that will drag him down. I mean, I think the thing, like I think I've been seeing, like a lot of people wish casting for, yes, is that Biden pardons Trump, that that he is convicted, but Biden pardons him to heal the nation and bring them together. So, like, you know, as someone who was pardoned of a crime, can you still run for president? Okay, so this is very interesting because you are explicitly barred from getting. From seeking the presidency, or I think any elected office, if you've been, if you are successfully removed from office after being impeached, which is a big argument that a lot of the people had who really wanted to push harder uh, right after the uh, January sixth January yeah. to like immediately do impeachment like that night. Yeah, and I gotta say, if they'd held the vote that night, they might have got somewhere. It's possible because those guys were actually scared out of their fucking yeah. minds. They were terrified, <laughs> and they had no idea what the media was going to respond. And they were all like in the air, like oh, and they were all saying that it was horrifying because they, they were absolutely spooked. And it, and but the thing is, the Democrats cannot act that way. It's 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 constitutionally impossible for them. They missed their shot if they had one, and now it's gone. I'm sorry, it's gone. So sorry. Nobody cares. Old news. Uh, and I really just I I just don't think that that's true. I think they want it to be true. I think that every thing about every story about this fucking raid and about the investigation just gets Republican voters. More you know, on his side. Yeah, I remember Rick Perlstein said that he did a panel with some like, uh, like hardcore movement conservative intellectuals about uh, Nixon, and the, uh, Perlstein was like talking about all those horrible crimes and how he like had genuinely like transgressed in, in 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 unprecedented ways over certain things. And one of the panelists said to him, "I didn't like Nixon until Watergate," <laughs> and I feel like even if you kind of want to move beyond the election, if you're sick of hearing about it which I think that was honestly the thing that might have hurt Trump is just people not wanting the whole, elect, whole election to be about the last election. They were just wanting him to move on. Now they got something to move on to that casts him as the, once again, as the persecuted victim of the combined forces of, of the, the FBI stormtroopers and the media and the Democratic Republican and the establishment of the... I mean, he validates every one of their conceived beliefs about how things work every day that he's investigated. I mean, it's just like the, 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 this whole list and like... 
And you know, one, one more thing I want to say about DeSantis is interesting. It's sort of similar to Donald Trump. I have noticed that he has started to try talking like Trump. Yep. And I saw an image of him today at the Turning Point USA He conference. was standing real standing normal. Standing like Trump. Exceedingly normal standing. <laughs> and I have to say, that was elite level standing. Sort of like, you know, like arms sort of arms slightly out. Arms out to the side. Leaning forward, slightly bent at the waist. Like, 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 like an ill-fitting like suit. An, yeah, sort of like an action figure in, yeah, the, yeah. in the box. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're still in the original plastic. Yeah, uh, just... Just there. Uh, no, he's got the standing down. He's getting the voice down. But he, I'm sorry. We said this earlier on the a words, previous episode. Not the music. Uh, if, I guarantee you, DeSantis is trying to like somehow arrange it to like fake an FBI raid of the governor's mansion. <laughs> like, he, needs, he needs something to... This is a thing where he can't make the news because this requires some sort of reaction that he has not run afoul of, you know? So he's going to have to have somebody like take a shot at him or something. <laughs> Like, seriously, he's going to have to get some Antifa to, like, try to shoot him, uh, Bob Roberts style. Yeah. Because otherwise, how does he stay in the news? If all the news is about Trump, then it, he defines the issue, and it's very much harder for him to stand out. I think that this stuff actually makes Trump even more of a fucking uh, uh, front runner. I guess, like, yeah, like, the, the whole thing of this list is that it's just, like, once again, it, it's the establishment media wish casting trying to create through sort of like like the secret yep. to sort of conjure a reality where things can go back to normal yep. where that the republican party will be normal normalized it will be nice and normal Get us some again. normality please and that, like and just like to 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 create and kind of craft and co- sort of conjure into being a reality where republican voters are not 100% united behind my president your president still president donald J. Trump. The eternal president. Yes. The he God is, emperor. He is now and forever has been our president <laughs> throughout time and space. Um, is there anyone, though, that was not mentioned in this top 10 that you think, you know, like, like they should like have Glenn mentioned Blumkin, eight of these Blumkin. motherfuckers. They should not have mentioned eight of these motherfuckers. So there's absolutely nobody else who should be in the conversation. It's just this is a closed primary. You got maybe one other. You got. A one in, what, six chance that fucking things fall right for DeSantis. But I honestly feel like if Trump does run, he's got it. I think the only scenario that the, the most likely scenario of DeSantis win is not beating Trump in a primary. It is Trump getting spooked by the investigation and basically bluffed off of the post. And he might actually well, let that happen. Well, like I mean, similar to Mike Pence needing to be president to avoid being hanged uh, for treason. Um, do you think that Trump feels like he has to become president again to avoid going to prison. Honestly, it's a real or getting, possibility. getting indicted or like, something like that. He is, he is apparently at every step of this, he has been more afraid of like actually I getting mean, he, caught. He just pleaded the fifth. Then he really should have <laughs> the tax simply case. because he is too dumb to really recognize the actual implications of what he has done because all he wanted to do was be in the news all the time. He just wanted to be on TV. That's why he ran for president. He just wanted to be the only thing that was on television. Well, I mean, he achieved that goal. Exactly. But he's still living it. But now, like, the the scrutiny. Exactly. Such that, like, it's like, once they start looking in your tax returns and shit, you know, like, that's that's not the kind of TV he wants. And for, like, he got in there, and at every moment, he called their bluff, and they backed down. And so he just operated off of that premise, that there was no bluff he couldn't call. And maybe now, I don't know, it's all in his head, and I don't know who his advisors are. He definitely has a bunch of cucks in there with him in his ear like Ivanka they might be telling him and they might convince him to go against his gut like there are several times in his presidency where his gut told him and I agree with his gut that he could have crossed the line but the people around him basically convinced him that it would have been too much blowback he and he ended up kind of not really going as far as he could not honestly obviously not with any policy because he doesn't care about policy but just in terms of extending his personal dominion you know an ability to defy an order that is so largely dependent on unspoken and unwritten rules that he just ignored and that's what terrifies them and the thing about DeSantis is yes he's every bit as much of a cultural war psycho he's way more of a cultural war psycho than than DeS- than uh, Trump is but he's a politician at the end of the day he owes his career to the democrat or to the republican party and to the media the machine the establishment however you want to define it just like with Pence he is not he does not have an independent identity and source of power that Trump did, which is his celebrity. Let's do a lightning round here because the Washington Post also has some like also mentioned. Oh, let's you know, hear these not chumps. Okay, listen, these, these didn't even make the top ten. Let's do a lightning round here. 
Senator Marco Rubio. Insane. R- little, little Marco, get him out about? of here. Little Marco, get, out, get the fuck out of here. He got washed the first time. Marco was going nowhere. Uh, Senator Josh Hawley. Ch- ch- Josh Hawley. A puff. He's a puff, though. Absolute. Yeah, no. uh, the Senator, video of him running away. Get me out of here. Get him uh, out. Of here. Senator Ben Sass. Also, oh, get out of here. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, then zero. <laughs> Senator Tom Cotton. Uh, same as C previous two. Loser. C, C previous These two. These fucking chumps. Are, who, who? Where do you think you live? What year is this? Uh, Lynn Cheney. <laughs> she just got turfed out of her own seat. Her family's fucking hereditary seat in Wyoming. New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sununu fever is catching. Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson. We Never love, heard of him. We Never heard of this Asa. guy. We love our Asa, <laughs> don't we? South Dakota Governor Christy L. Nome. Oh, we love her. Oh, she's kind of a dime. She's kind of hot, though. That's the thing. Is Christy Nome is hot. She's she could culture be a like, warrior. Loki, like VP, maybe. She's called culture warrior, she's, hot lady. Okay, yes. I would say it's the, okay. If there is anybody but Scott, I still think it's going to be Scott, but I could, if not, uh, uh, Nome is a good VP material, too. Uh, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan. So, no, no, nope, <laughs> he's, nope. he's, he's a fatty. No, <laughs> he is a fatty. <laughs> he's he's a fatty. bald. And again, he's the moderate Republican. Yeah, they want him to come fuck. to their senses. Yeah. Uh, Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Uh, cripple. He, cripple. Loser. <laughs> Wheeling his house around. I like people who don't get crushed by trees. <laughs> and finally, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. What? He spent... He spent he's, he spent 40... What? He spent two years at the White House as an Ottoman... Like they used them to put their feet up on. Like, what was he there for? <laughs> Just to observe the abuse. He was drunk. a fucking beanbag chair. <laughs> like, f- it's like, it's like uh, <laughs> Trump has like uh, foreign dignitaries or like foreign leaders like, you know, uh, Netanyahu or Shinzo Abe comes to the White House and he's like, he makes Chris Christie walk into the Oval House, crawl into the Oval House on all fours and lets them put their feet up <laughs> on his back like human furniture. Yep. Yeah. Watch him. I'm going to make him eat out of a dog bowl. Oh, I'm sorry. He didn't even get to be a fucking beanbag chair in the Oval Office because Jared wouldn't yeah. let him into the administration because he threw his da- at dad in jail. Jared, again, big fat mix who got owned by Jared Kushner. You're never you are any getting, any, ever getting anywhere near power. Yeah. These, this list is just, they are huffing gasoline. Cause, and, and you know what? Part of it is they do desperately want Trump not to be on the ballot even again it makes their tummy hurt but also they don't want to just if the story is as it is if the if the reality is given as we should really be understanding it which is this is at best a two-person race well then what are you going to talk about all that yeah what, what's what's this going to well, get I mean, people I'm, what's going to get people going and the thing is it's true it's the it's the it's cotton candy you can't beat it it's great it's sports <laughs> Well, uh, to move on, I'd like to take, take a look at sort of the lighter side of the news. Yes. So, uh, Matt, I think our show has been fairly consistent when it comes to where we fall in the war on bugs. Absolutely. Kill, Kill exter- them roots. all. Get rid of them. No more. However, Matt. An only good bug is a dead bug. <laughs> I'm doing my part. Yep. Matt, however, in New York State, there are some people who are taking the side of the bugs. Okay. In, it's because courtesy of the New York Times. In the lanternfly war, some take the bug side. Wow. So I'll tell you talking- what, I'm from Buenos Aires, and I say <laughs> kill them all. Yeah, th- this is a little disturbing. You're talking about like genuine species treason yeah. here. Even as the invasive pest spreads across 11 states and threatens agriculture, lanternflies are winning sympathizers who resist kill on site orders. Who are these sickos? Who, what kind who of are weirdos these are we talking about? Well, the New York Times, thankfully, is going to tell us who they are. Yep. And uh, unfortunately, not their addresses and phone numbers. Seriously, <laughs> we, should, we need to find out where these people are. So, uh, this, uh, New York Times here. This is, you know, a, a different take on the war on bugs. So it begins. When Lee Weiss, 31, sees a spotted lantern fly, an invasive pest so voracious that it is the target of several officially sanctioned smash on site campaigns, he acts swiftly. He scoops up each crim- he scoops each crimson creature up, then he carefully hides it from any would be assassins. So this guy's hiding lantern flies like fucking Anne Frank or something. And I'm like, okay, so he says, 
the target of several officially sanctioned smash on site campaigns. I'm sorry, I thought all bugs were like if you, if you were officially sanctioned to smash them on site. Is there is there any bug that is like protected by the Endangered Species Act where you can't just step on it or swat it if it's in your house? Well, that's the thing is that obviously it's legal to kill all bugs. Yeah. This is different. They're saying now they're saying like yeah, it is your duty. Yeah. It is your civic duty. This is the big so reason. So like pythons in Florida. Here's the reason that this is a story, because this is not just like, hey, watch out for these guys, or these aren't sort of good. This is actually telling people, hey, you have an actual civic duty. A responsibility of citizenship involves killing these bugs. And that is, for a lot of people, too much to be asked. We are far too alienated from our institutions to take on that level of fealty to them, that we're going to carry out their actions to squash bugs. Now, that's the thing. A lot of people will do this happily, because, hey, squashing bugs, it's fun. Going to have a good time, fuck the bugs, and I get to feel like a good person. But for some people who think it's gross, they would rather create a fantasy moral world where they're doing the right thing rather than just doing their civic goddamn duty as goddamn citizens of this country trying to, trying to live, for Christ's sake. How about as human freaking beings? As human <laughs> beings, for crying out loud, help us out. Put in a fucking hand. Mr. Weiss is among an emerging group of conscientious objectors to the open season on the insect. Just go to Canada. Seriously. My country, love it or leave it, asshole. Indeed. Their reasons differ. Some are vegans who find killing pests eat wrong. The lanternfly, okay, others doubt the threat lanternflies pose or have been repulsed by the glee surrounding lanternfly annihilation. So they're like lanternfly truthers. Yeah. They're just like, they're no, like they're fine. They're actually good for yeah. agricle crops. It's <laughs> wonderful. We love them. <laughs> and my favorite group, some people are faced with a flurry of lanternflies despite years of dedicated squashing and have just given up. So I mean, like, okay, like that's that's the reasonable group. See, they're that's just like the one we're talking. They're just like I've surrendered to the bugs. Exactly. We're not going to get rid of like, these. We're not idiots. getting rid of them. Our civic infrastructure, the thing that you're trying to get enlist my help into, it doesn't exist. It's good effort after bad. I, I'm going to redirect my efforts elsewhere. And yeah, that is just a good moral uh, moral choice. It is not the evasion of a moral choice. Yes, exactly. What these people are doing. Still, another few think lantern flies are too cute to kill. The, the gray and red winged plant hopper from China. Oh, it's from China. Not good, folks. <laughs> it's from China. Gotta get rid of it. Uh, the, the gray and red winged plant hopper from China first showed up in Pennsylvania in 2014. It has since swarmed across at least 11 states, including New York, growing as an agricultural threat, particularly to grape harvests and fruit trees, according to the United States Department of Agriculture. Several studies on the encroaching invasion have projected that landernflies could do upwards of hundreds of millions of dollars of damage. While the infestation rages on the East Coast, scientific models have predicted that the bugs could spread across the country, reaching California's wine country by the Not next good, decade. Not good, my delicious seven yard cabinet. Seven yards. It's so they're so good. Well, if these cowards and traders in New York don't do do their job. Yeah, you, know, you, you gotta you, get out you, there. You guys in California are gonna be uh, you're gonna be you're gonna be infested. There's gonna be no more wines. I need my wine, folks. Don't talk to me until I've had my wine. There's a California wine. There's a California <laughs> wine inspired by that same bug excellence. <laughs> the bugs are prevented ah, in the bottles. The bugs. <laughs> oh, the lantern fly. They're crawling on my skin. <laughs> <laughs> That's my impression of uh, Orson Welles as a crystal meth addict. <laughs> oh, the bugs. They're under my skin. <laughs> There's a California crystal meth inspired <laughs> by that same Mexican excellence. <laughs> to fight back, state and local officials in infested areas have enlisted their constituents in an anti-lanternfly militia. Authorities in battlegrounds such as New York, New Jersey, and in particular Pennsylvania, the insect's apparent ground zero, have framed the campaign against the creature as an act of civic duty. Yes. Where, where is Fetterman and Dr. Oz on this? How exactly. come, is this an issue in the campaign? I'd like to, I'd like to see them weigh in on this. Well, I mean, frankly. This, is, this isn't a real thing. This is just, they made up a story. <laughs> I mean, even if these are all pe real people who are talking like and have earnest beliefs about this, you're talking about such a yeah. small group of people yeah, this is, that this isn't functionally a real story. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you can you can kill lantern flies all you want in Pennsylvania, but you can't get a fucking beer on Sunday. Get the yeah. fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Um, calls to action to civilians to stamp out the invaders, literally, have been enthusiastically met. In New York, Brooklyn summer campers engage in lantern fly hunts in the state park. Uh, and end the state park preserve on Staten Island hosted a squishathon in 2021. This is literally Starship Troopers. Yes. This is kids just stepping on bugs. Yeah. Everyone's doing their part. Are you? <laughs> 
The war effort needs your effort at work, at home, in your community. <laughs> whacking day. Yeah, whacking day. Last year, a New Jersey woman threw a lanternfly crushing pub crawl when Pennsylvania man developed an app that tracks users' kills called Squisher. <laughs> All right, I'm starting to agree with the people who are against it. Yeah, see, now why can't we have anything? See, here's the thing. It's a civic duty, and there's yeah. the thing that we can't handle. We cannot handle the duty part. We either, like in a case like this, if we can have fun squashing ants, squashing bugs, we will find a way to make it fun. But uh, if we don't like that, then we'll find a way not to do it. Instead of just doing it as a civic duty, how about that? Instead of making it into a goddamn app, for Christ's sake. Mr. Weiss, a former instructor of Buddhist philosophy who lives in Philadelphia, has not crushed a single lanternfly. It's phrased in almost moral terms, said Mr. Weiss, of the rallying cries gathering the forces against lanternflies. The Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture runs a hotline to report the bugs at one 4 bad fly and ask people to kill it, squash it, smash it, just get rid of it on its website. Okay, this is, this is veering into dangerous eliminationist rhetoric. It's true. And that's the thing is, like, I do feel like some people feel aw- awkward about this because they feel like this is just the first step in, you know, the move <laughs> towards the eventually Holocaust, treating yeah. people like that. You should not concede <laughs> that they are, which no, is what you're no, doing. You're right. You're right. You are that's going to make it easier to squash out. Yeah. Uh, it's know. like, no, draw the line. This is a good thing to do because they're bugs. And they're we, not and, people. And like, and people, you know, like, and you know, we like fruits and vegetables. We need them. We need them to live. <laughs> so we're in competition with the bugs yes. on this, and one one of us has got to go. Yeah, it's triage, baby. Uh, it says here, holding up a picture of a spotted lantern fly like a wanted poster, New York State Senator Chuck Schumer stood at a news conference near Central Park earlier this month, calling for more federal funds to be used to fight the scourge. Again, I love it. Like. Chuck Schumer, this is like <laughs> perfect Democrat politician stuff. Yep. These are the pre- these are the angry press conferences he's giving <laughs> about just about lantern flies. Yeah, can put a fucking the Supreme Court justices on a wanted poster and get people <laughs> to squish them. <laughs> parody. That's, parody. That's a parody. Parody video in game. in a video game. Yes. Imagine that were happening <laughs> in a video game. Perhaps the new Grand Theft Auto. Uh, in New York, officials first spotted the lantern fly on Staten Island in 2020. Since then, it has proliferated. Mr. Schumer said, warning that leafy spots from Central Park to Long Island's wineries to the farms of upstate were at risk. The New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets has put out a hit and asked the public to report any sightings of the bug or to dispatch them. All right, here's where we get into some, some real buttes. Like, like the, the two incredibly annoying people that they found to front the, yeah. the anti-lanternfly right. elimination. Uh, the, the fake non-story yeah. isn't real. <laughs> but, but, I mean, come on. Yeah, it's so funny. It's, uh, okay, Jody Smith, 33, a software developer, has so far declined. Mr. Smith is vegan, yet not an absolutist. He will exterminate cockroaches in his apartment in oh, Manhattan's Union Square. interesting. Very interesting. When it's affecting you personally. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, there's no more, oh, there's no more objection. Only when it's other people and their crops. He's a vegan. He crops. should care about more than anyone about fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Interesting, though. Because, you know, I barely eat salad at all. You know? So he's basically <laughs> willing to impose, like, a castle doctrine, <laughs> yeah. like, libertarian non-aggression principle thing. We're like, well... It, as long as you're outside of my domicile, my arbitrarily determined fake property, then I can do whatever I want to you. That is, that's literally the basis of libertarian capitalist uh, morality. Well, Congratulations. I mean, this, this guy is a software developer. There we so, go. So, I mean, you can draw your own conclusions. But the state endorsed bloodlust when it comes to lantern flies, and the sense that they are disposable makes him uncomfortable. If someone was like, oh, we have to kill all the Pomeranians, people might feel a lot differently about it. I mean, well, I, wouldn't. Not- I wouldn't. <laughs> well, <laughs> Smash I- them. No. Smash them. Crush them. <laughs> no, they're cute. Those guys are cute. They're so stupid looking. Their, their little faces are always like, they're no, a no, little no. smile. They look so stupid. No, I mean, dumb. If we're gonna, if we're going to... If we're going to do eliminationism to any breed of dog, you, you know which one is first on the chopping block. Which one? Pitbulls. Oh, God. Pitbulls. I mean... If you see one, if you, if you see one, it's your duty... <laughs> Like half the it's country a, is there already. You need though. to get in a kinetic situation immediately. Because we do have places where there are basically <laughs> kill on site orders for pit bulls in this country. Uh, and I guess like it's so funny. He's like, oh, if we have to kill all the Pomeranians, people might feel differently. Well, yeah, killing a dog, it's just massive, massive bloodletting of dogs. Why? Yeah, in the what street. is the purpose That's, of this? I'm sorry. That is 
different yes, than insects. It's a different thing. <laughs> if people were just going around with hammers smashing toy poodles on the street, yeah. it would be, like be, that would be disturbing. It's, be, a, it's an offense to the senses. It's, <laughs> yes, and it's it's because either. of its because of its gratuity. Yes, yeah. it is gratuitous. <laughs> this is not gratuitous. Yes, some people are trying to get some fun out of it because people need to have fun, or else they're going to kill themselves at every moment of their lives. But it is not gratuitous. They have to go. A spokesman for Senator Schumer, Angela Rofero, encouraged New Yorkers to keep on smashing. He would not entertain mis- misgivings like Mr. Smith's. Individuals who feel that way can report them to New York State or look away. Though, I mean, I think you should take a stronger stance against these traitors. Honestly, honestly, honestly like, yeah. what are you people bitching about? There's not even a criminal sanction associated with this. It's just your nagging conscience. Those tasked with protecting agriculture will say sympathy for the lanternfly is misguided. We can understand the hesitancy to kill the spotted lanternfly, which appear colorful and harmless. Christopher Logue, director of plant industry for New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets, said in an email, however, the damage this invasive species can do in harming important crops and impacting our food system is real. He added, we just can't take the chance. Why take a chance? I mean, why take a chance? I would, I would agree with that. That's, just, that's like, just how I feel. The U.S. agricultural supply chain is doing so good right now <laughs> that I think it could withstand a few lantern flies. These people, you know who these people are? These are the people in the fucking zombie movie who won't shoot one of their family members. Yes, they turn, yes, and then yes. Everybody else gets killed. And like they're like, they're like you know, like, like it's old yellow. They're like, Paul, Paul, you still there? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Just, and then they bite them, and then they end up biting everybody, and the entire fucking cabin burns to the you ground. You have to destroy the brain. You got to kill the brain. Shoot them in the head. People for the ethical treatment of animals offered a less than full throated defense of the lantern fight. Look, if PETA is sort of like if, on if the you fence can't about get this, them you can't on get board those for your goofy, loot- fucking loot- loot- indulgent uh, animal those goofies, rights. Those goofies, those bozos. Uh, the advocacy group did not. The, adv- the advocacy group did advise people, however, to carefully consider their actions if it involves killing any living being, no matter how small or unfamiliar. Said Katie Cryar, a PETA spokeswoman. But I mean, she's basically saying she's like, like you, 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 carefully consider it, but take them out, the then kill it, kill just kill the it. Thing. Despite her distaste for the lanternfly, Karen Charles, 31, has gone out of her way to avoid harming them. Ms. Charles, a YouTube content creator from Parlin in central New Jersey, was playing with her two-year-old daughter atop a playground slide when she found her way down the ladder blocked by two lanternflies. It was, go down this slide or kill the bugs, and I don't want to stomp on them, she said. So she essentially avoided playing with her child to spare the lives of two flies that were on a slide. Freak. Absolute bozo. What is wrong with you people? <laughs> what? what I got to say, Land of Flies, RIP bozo. Pack watch. <laughs> <laughs> Stopping her was a mix of fear and pity, she said. They're creepy. I hate them. But I feel a little bad for them and for me. This is just like, what is this self-loathing like, reflected who? back on you? Like, <laughs> and uh, You should not be identifying with an insect. I mean, yes, in a cosmic sense, of course, we're all connected and all part of a great chain of being. But from a practical perspective, the individual relationship between the human and representative of the broader ecosystem and an individual fly, it's, it's catastrophic. It's massive. Flies do not have any sympathy for you. No. Or anything else. They have they no can't. feeling. They have, they have no pity, no mercy. Yeah. It says, uh, Mr. she ended up squeezing down the slide alongside her daughter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Aware that their un- their opinions are unpopular, those championing lantern flies often do so in secret. Except like a- or in the New York Times. <laughs> it's like those a- two places, secretly or the biggest newspaper. Like the resistance in the movement under the the lantern fly underground. Catherine Bonner, twenty two, a Temple University student in Philadelphia, shares her lantern fly sympathies. How the red spots on their faces look like they are wearing blush, only with a few close friends. It's like that movie Mimic where like cockroaches become <laughs> mutated and yeah. start looking like people when they're yeah. like in their carapace or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, look, it's like one of us. Ah! It's, uh, it's, wearing, it's wearing blush. Well, these people would obviously be very easily fooled by them. Uh, the bugs didn't ask to be invasive. They're just living their own life, Ms. Bonner said. Yeah, and so are we. Yeah. I would be bummed if I suddenly started existing somewhere I wasn't supposed to exist and everyone started killing me for it. Yeah, like that would be bad. <laughs> yeah, because you are a person. <laughs> And you could not be a lantern right. fly. This is very interesting. Where it's just like people are just like, like if we can, like they're just projecting like all these human moral values onto insect species. Yeah, which is sort of is is disturbing in its own right because it just if the life of a human is equivalent to that of a lanternfly, ninety nine point nine percent of the population, if they like accept that, 
is a moral proposition, yeah. we'll have no problem killing either of them. It's true. You are the ones <laughs> equating insects and people here. That it cannot be emphasized enough. It says <laughs> an invasive species like colonizers. She's already an invasive species in this continent. She, she, wait, lady, hold on. Yes, indeed she is. Boom, colonizer. Right, colonizer, invasive species. Get yep. out of here. Yet even an Arden fan, Ms. Bonner likes to hold them and take them for rides in her palm. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Juno from the film Juno. Is ambivalent mm. about her advocacy. I feel like I'm evil saying this because I know they are so bad for the environment, she added. Just get, get people just like, it's just, they can't even be weird without questioning their weirdness and just sort of like, the yeah, wicked... I'm, sa- I'm saving these lanternflies, but I feel, I, I feel bad killing them, but I also feel bad because they're harming other people, and I just like, get into like this moral merry-go-round, where it's just and like, there's that, no way off this carousel. That is the, what the cause of the mania of confession that we have. <laughs> yeah. The way that people feel the need to express all this stuff that like, is something really for you to deal with, but they make, may, need to make it other people's problem because they need to hear that it's okay. Because they have no moral framework to actually make a decision. Because they are, at the end of the day, just narcissists, as we mostly are in this country, in this world at this point. And we can only operate through a narcissistic lens, but that doesn't resolve these kind of questions. And so we have to just end up confessing the part of us that feels guilty because we were not able to just come to a decisive decision to do something. You know who, uh, you know who are not the group that's not plagued by narcissism? Lanternflies. Lantern flies. Lantern flies. That's true. Let's let them go in charge for a while. <laughs> How would we let a swarm of lanternflies be the Republican nominee in 2024? <laughs> Lanternfly defenders argue that the widespread and costly destruction the bugs are supposedly capable of has not fully materialized. <laughs> oh, okay. It's not that bad. <laughs> so let's just wait and see what well, happens. Never mind. It'll be all right. Again, we have so much. Uh, we have so much uh, of a margin to work with right now. Uh, lanternflies, for example, do not appear able to kill mature hardwoods as initially feared. But Shannon Powers, a spokesperson, a spokeswoman for the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, said they are not to be underestimated. Some vineyards in Southeast Pennsylvania, she said, have lost over ninety percent of their crops to the insect. Vineyards looked like they had been burned to the ground. Ms. Powers said. And just how effective all the smashing is remains in question. Despite multi-year pro-squash campaigns, the bugs seem almost unchecked and their numbers can have grown. Well, that's sort of the question I had in mind about all this, where it's like, even if like every citizen of the country yeah, there's so were to engage in a, a so round-the-clock bug yeah. smashing campaign where they like they find the bugs, smash them, kill them, destroy them, burn them. It's an it's a bug species. Yeah. This is a plague. It's yeah. just like there, there's no like there's nothing to be, I mean, I guess you can like do your best. Yeah. But like, come on, it, it's going to be. And this is where you can come to that moral conclusion. Of just like, oh, yeah, I've given up. I have I other don't care. things to do. <laughs> yeah. And then, and the thing is, again, I respect it because it was come to through an honest, you know, uh, process. You did not uh, avoid the problem by retreating to some fake morality. This is totally situational, totally arbitrary, like that asshole who will kill cockroaches. And here's the thing, even, even if you want to talk about, like, oh, the dangers of, of, of this sort of thinking, you know, uh, how it might uh, impact the way we deal with people, any minimally competent government of any kind of composition would do something like this, would try to stop these fucking bugs. Of course, most minimally competent gov- governments wouldn't let it happen in the first fucking place. But we don't have one of those, which well, is why I could see it if people just stopped caring. Well, speak, speaking of other people who have stopped caring, uh, Felix has checked in the chat here. He says, fuck, I'm sorry. I took a nap and slept through the alarm. It's fine. Smash him like a bug. We should smash him <laughs> like a bug. We're doing the five pests campaign, folks. We're adding Felix. He's up there with the sparrows now. <laughs> it should be said, though, that uh, that was a huge backfire and contributor to the uh, massive famines of the Great Leap Forward was uh, the four pest campaign in China. <laughs> when they were like, get rid of all these sparrows. And then it why turns did they, out. Why, like, why did they want to get rid of sparrows? Because they were a nuisance, basically. Wait, 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 who's ever been annoyed by a sparrow? There are a lot. Like of them. seagulls. No. Seagulls are annoying. They're they, like, annoying. Pigeons are annoying. They take your food and shit. Sparrows it are was just delightful. Thought that they were a hindrance to some agricultural okay. process. I don't know which specific one. But. When they were gone, it proved, oh, no, they were keystone to certain processes, and they fucked up, uh, uh, fucked up agricultural yields big time. Uh, but, again, that's then. They didn't know no better. We know better now. Yeah. The lanternflies are not sparrows. Okay. A 2021 study by researchers at Lafayette College in eastern Pennsylvania indicated that eradication efforts focusing on the insect's ability to reproduce are among those most likely to make a dent. Yeah, like if there was some sort of, like, like I don't know, 
a chemical that could uh, sterilize them or you could get them before they're born or before they're hatched or whatever. Jeez, this looks this sounds like a job for government. <laughs> sure would be useful if we had some a body capable of coordinating human activity in the most effective way possible towards a given end. That would be really great if we had one of those. Instead, we just have a bunch of bozos with apps telling people where to <laughs> individually step on individual flies. Uh, there's, there's been a mosquito sighting in your neighborhood. Go have Pokemon Go to kill it. <laughs> That's what they should do. They should be like, make every lantern fly in the metaverse like a Snorlax or a Pikachu. <laughs> if you smash them, you can, you can upgrade your Pokemon. Yeah, exactly. Ann Johnson, a PhD student in the Department of Entomology at Pennsylvania State University who studies lanternflies, recommends traps or scraping off the grayish masses of eggs they seem to lay on any surface they can find. Yeah, get those eggs. Kill them before they're born. Yeah. I don't like insects. I love them, she said. But the spotted lanternfly is being here is our responsibility. It is up to us to fix it. Exactly. Like, so, like we yeah, are the ones leave... inflicting this on our poor environment. Like, those trees are, are people, too, you know? Yeah. Because I do believe the trees and humans and the lanternflies are all related to one another, meaningfully and intimately and spiritually. Uh, but if that's true, that has certain implications. And one of them is that you have to make moral choices about distinctions. To figure out what matters most in the moment. Uh, so, yeah, we'll leave it there for today. Uh -huh. uh, just like, you know, to all listeners, uh, if you see a lantern fly, kill it. Yeah. But more importantly, if you see their gray goo eggs, yeah, destroy absolutely. that. That's the most effective way of getting uh, rid of the lantern yeah. flies. We're, 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 putting, uh, we're putting a brick out there on lantern flies. We're yeah. putting stacks. Putting stacks out on a lantern stacks fly. Stacks out on lantern flies. Well, uh, yeah. So I think let's leave it there for today's show. Uh, thank you to Matt. Fuck you to Felix. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We, we, we love we Felix. We love Felix. We love Felix. We love Felix. Folks. Folks. So it's, it's, it's an alarm I don't like. Yeah, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Smash that fucker. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, until next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.